Okay, and here we go. Hello again, everybody. Um, I know some of you were here last stream where we started off this piece. We're just going to be continuing with it. So, because it is Black History Month, it is October. I thought that I'd start off by just doing a um, self-portrait because I haven't done one in about eight, nine years. So, well, not a proper one, not fully painted, fully illustrated one. So, yeah. This is how we're gonna spend the stream, just trying to finish this off and get more done. Now, just coming back to this and having a look at it. It's looking all right, um, but I'm finding that it looks a little bit washed out. So we'll try and get some more warm colors in, especially around uh, these sort of areas here. Um, we'll continue working our way up um we'll try and get those sort of oranges those reds and i'm not going for sort of um flat basic realistic colors in terms of i'm not going for just brown white and dark brown um, i want to bring in those you see these greens that we brought in here those purples that are showing through especially in the shadows i want to keep those in there so we'll keep working through that now as you can see in the corner there's the image that i started with um there's a whole a lot of light coming from the left, really high exposure, uh, bright light from my, uh, well, the light that I used to film with. And from the right, we're getting this um, really interesting secondary light uh, with a blue tinge to it. That's why I've gone in with the purple um, on the right hand side. And of course, we've got a little bit of blue there, which we're going to fix up later on. So without further ado, let's just jump straight in. I'm going to focus on working my way up the face, as I said before, and then I'll handle the hands and the um, shirt later on. So, sit back, maybe put on some music for yourselves and enjoy. So just get going with the eye around here. Okay, so this shadow might be a little bit too dark. No, it should be fine. It should be fine. Nice little purple showing through there. That's what we want. Like I said, warmth is part of the aim for today. So we're trying to get this sort of washed out effect we're getting in some places and basically just get rid of it. Just kind of sort of lightly put in where my beard is. Well, moustache. And a little bit of beard. It's barely a beard. Give me a bit of an idea of how the colors are working. So the red is, is a bit too red there. So I just need to make sure to dull that down at some point. Go back to it later. Let's 
just gonna switch to my pretty much standard brush. Just go on there. Push those two layers. Hey, hey there Zed. How you doing? Good to see you on here again. Get a little, little bits in there on the eye. This bit is in quite a lot of shadow though, so I might have to darken that again. So how's with where you guys are? Because here we're getting quite a lot of rain. I was actually out driving yesterday in some areas we've been flooding. So I don't know how it is in your parts of the country or your parts of the world. You're getting snow, you're getting rain, you're getting sun. Maybe something really unexpected like sandstorms. Very wet where you are. There's rain. Check. Is it like flooding wet or just, yeah, good amount of rain? flooding by a lot we have this weird thing happen when we um whenever we get rain like this where it's been dry for ages and then we just get loads of rain it happened last year around this time as well where after the rain mushrooms will just start will just grow over almost overnight in our garden like loads of them and they'll die a few days later so at the moment like our garden just has loads of massive patches of mushrooms which i'm expecting will disappear by the end of the week I think it's because the spores or something get carried on the rain which is pretty cool I think if there was ever any sort of specialism that I would want to have it would be 
outside of art and yeah and sort of in biology it would definitely be to do with uh, classifying plants and animals I think people that can spot plants spot animals spot fungi and stuff like that and just be like this is what this is this is what that is I think that's super cool Just like bird watchers, people always <laughs> seem to make fun of them in like TV shows and stuff. And I'm just like, these are people who have a like <laughs> a hobby which is fairly, which requires like a lot of skill and attention to detail, and a lot of memory, and a good eye. Like people like that have like they have a lot of my respect. And what we listen to these days, guys. I feel like not a lot of the artists that I listen to release much music during the lockdown, so I feel like I've been to a lot of the same stuff. So I've been going back and sort of finding some of the stuff that I used to listen to when I was younger, when I used to play in a band. So more sort of indie and uh, rock and alternative stuff. But also I've been looking into, after seeing a really interesting documentary on uh, black classical musicians from the past sort of like 400 years um, I found a lot of really interesting stuff there because I love orchestras I love uh, watching and listening to orchestras play I, I'm a big fan of well not a big fan but a sizable fan of classical music ooh Stevie Ray Vaughan the name doesn't sound familiar where might I have heard of him Jet does he does he have any particular pieces which are well known Sorry, I'm just googling this guitarist. <laughs> so Stevie, Ray. see if I can. If I've heard any of his pieces before. Hmm. Doesn't look like it, but related acts. I have heard of some of those. Have I ever used Critter? I've never used Critter Mad Max. I have not. Um, although I've heard, is it free? Is Critter free? If it's not free, I know that it's, it's definitely affordable, but it's one of the alternatives to Photoshop that people often advise. I did try Fire Alpaca and I did try Coral, but because I was so used to Photoshop, I was just like, I don't have time to, re to relearn when I'm really comfortable with Photoshop and I like the stuff that it does for me. Also helps that because I'm a teacher, I get a slight discount on Photoshop, which is nice. A blues guitarist quite known in the 1980s. I'll definitely check out some of his music later on, Jet. Because like I said, I'm hunting for a new piece of music. Do you guys find uh, music inspires your work, whether it be art, writing or anything like that? I find that sometimes you just listen to a piece and you're just ready to <laughs> take on the world in whatever profession that you're working in or working towards. So Crete is free, yeah. Yeah, I might give it a go. 
because there's been a few, there are a few people that I uh, that I've taught or that I've spoken to over the years who have said, "Oh, I use Krita, Krita, Krita." putting a temporary pupil for now and iris because to me they both have to be done sort of simultaneously otherwise one can look like it's looking up into space which happens quite a lot in my comics <laughs> one eye looks like it's wandering off somewhere i don't really want that for this piece to avoid that but we'll just do a temporary sort of one here for now Ooh. I see why there's an issue here. Okay. So Lenny, I'll start with that song and then I'll see where it takes me. Nope, no, 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 no. Okay, let's try. Oops. Control D. Oh gosh, where are D? There we go. Let's try just doing it here like this. Transform with warp. I'll just lower it down slightly. And a bit up. A bit down. bit more of this way. Okay, I don't have to repaint some sections, but that's fine. So here, I might have to take it up a bit. Come around, go up. Just wanted to add a bit more depth to my eye because it looked like it was a bit too flat. The comic artist in me showing through that was. Madam Max, what's your specialism? Do you specialize in um, painting, digital art, graphics? What's your specialism? And with what material? All right, I'm just going to... Warp this section slightly, just a little bit. Going to lift that. Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay, so I think we're starting to get that. This image made my eyes look a bit bigger than I expected. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Keep it nice and bright. I'm trying not to rush this. I can sometimes get the urge to rush on live streams. I'm trying not to. I'll do it for as many live streams as it takes.
if we were to just cut this down to a picture like this, let me just see how this looks. Mm, get in there. Okay. Bit of that red. I'm not happy with that actually. Let's pull this back a bit. You love pen and ink, but did your assets look down? I hate pen and ink. <laughs> I don't hate it, um, but I've always, it's, it's, uh, I just never really like working in pen much. I started getting into it for a bit last, last year, year before that. But um, to me, pencil was always my main thing. And then I really like, love painting. When I started oil painting in university, um, I really, really liked it. Space wasn't the only issue. I've got a shed full of paintings at the out back. So I stopped. And that's why I do digital art pretty much only now. Digital art and sketchbook work. And like I said, the summer's events really sucked the art out of me. So even my sketchbook has remained, well, I don't even have a sketchbook at the moment. I've got a brown one, but normally I work on, on the white ones and I haven't even replaced it yet. Because I haven't really felt any urge to draw. Needs to be fair, it's part of why I think that this month is so important. This Black History Month. Because, as I said yesterday, there's only <laughs> so much of hair in that the rest of the world doesn't care about you or people that look like you that you can take before it starts to affect you. And so, having a month like this where we can just be a bit more positive and concentrate on the more interesting stuff. The stuff that's happened that's happened recently and stuff that's gonna be happening in the foreseeable future it's always a lot nicer to think about than all the bad problems in the world or the just the bad parts of our history hi predator season or predator SZN wherever you like to go by Uh, one Apple Pencil and I can't believe I have heard that the Apple the Apple products when it comes to art are amazing and I'm actually I don't like Apple products <laughs> um, because I haven't used them for well I've, I've never really used them outside of the, the educational setting so because it doesn't really mesh well with my other devices and stuff and because it's at least they used to be so different to use. I've never really been fond of them, but I do hear that the pencil and uh, Procreate are really, 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 really good drawing tools. You think the eye looks looks good, Jet? Thank you. I think I'm going to leave it for now. I'll come back to it later when I'm refining. What phone am I using? I'm using a, an S9 at the moment. It's actually why I used to record a lot of my videos because I found that my camera, it's autofocus isn't amazing. So a lot of my stuff was coming out on focus, my videos, and it was annoying. So now I use my phone, which isn't amazing quality, but it's good enough. It does the job and I haven't really had many people complain. I don't think I've had anyone actually complain, complain about the quality of my videos. Although personally, I see a lot of issue with it but people seem to be understanding that I'm just starting off. But yeah, I do have a lot of sort of Samsung and Android stuff. Let's get that one color there. A little bit more. As a webcam for classes, nice. What do you use for your classes? Teams or Zoom or Loom? Or a combination of a few. <laughs> Is Apple better than Samsung? I don't know. 
um, price wise if you're getting something of the same specs from Samsung or Apple to me Samsung tends to be better same with computers as well I'd rather get a pretty good level um, gaming PC with really high specs than a, a MacBook or Mac with lower specs but cost way way more Schoolology, I've never heard of that one. I'll look into it. Good thing to live by, Mad Max. No loyalty to the brands. The brands are there for the money. <laughs> so if it's good, you'll use it. That's nice. I do like when things mesh together though. So sometimes when you commit to one brand, um, when you buy something from one brand, it's just, it just ends up being easier to continue with that brand because that stuff talks to each other, it works well. Less errors that way. Hey Hater XYZ, haven't seen you in a long time. Hopefully you're keeping well. Jet, you have a Windows? Me too, that's what I'm working on right now, as you can probably tell. Got this sort of reddish tinge that happens around here. But I want to keep some of this sort of warm colour here. Expanses are hard to paint. So say the forehead, cheeks. If you're doing a whole person, the uh, things like the back. Or if they're wearing a t-shirt, that t-shirt. That if it's a plain t-shirt with no designs in it, so hard because any slight thing can make it look off. Prayers to Esther. Then this is not the this is not the place all the time. Okay. Don't ruin the stream. All right, thanks for understanding. Windows desktop, Apple laptop, Mad Max. Why would you do such a thing? Why would you mix your systems like that? You're right, Sonic. All right, guys, be sensible, please, this stream. Otherwise, I will have to mute you. All right, yep. Nice little bit of meat in here. So you retested it. <laughs> All right, be sensible. All right. 
So what I'm trying to do, so you might notice that uh, there's a lot of sort of like greens and purples coming out here. I'm trying to um, capture the color within within the shadows. So say for example, let me just zoom into this and see if you can see it. Do you see this area here? It doesn't quite look like a dark brown. It looks like there's more going on there than that. And there's more colors involved. It's from light bouncing around the room. I'm in, I'm in a blue room and I've got brown, brownish, yellowish skin. So when that blue from the room interacts with my skin, what do you get? You get a bit of a greeny brownish color. Basic science, apparently. So a bit more. So here's a question on the same topic of the Apple versus everything else, <laughs> I guess, or versus Samsung if you want. Uh, the Samsung headphones, whether that be Buds Live or the other one, the, the in-air ones, or the AirPods from Apple, which one do you guys think is better? I should get a moderator jet. AirPods, obviously. Why? You got to back up your you got to back up your claims with reasons. I need reasons here. So Jet, you've heard that they're overrated and Mad Max, you don't think much of them. So, so what do you use? Do you just use sort of standard inexpensive ones? Because that's what I was doing for a while. I was just using like those JPC gummy ones. It only cost like five to 10 pounds. <laughs> oh, wired Apple ones. All right, fair enough. You can use them while traveling, gym, and basically whenever. Well, I could say the same for the Buds Live, which is what I've got, the Samsung ones. They're a lot more discreet, though. People, a lot of people don't realize that I've got them in. So when I'm walking down the road, if I'm in a conversation, if I'm in a phone conversation, people think I'm talking to myself and stay clear from me. It's a bit funny. Yeah, sometimes cheap and simple is the way to go. But for me, I just, uh, I'd hated having the wires dangling and I kept having to replace the the um, headphones so much because they get breaking. Like literally I would go through about three pairs of headphones a year and at like five to 10 pounds each, depending on what Amazon was pricing them at the time. You know, you see it adds up after a while. So I just thought, let me just get something good that's gonna last me a while and that has no wires. Do you have active noise cancellation? They do, they do. They do. They do a pretty good job with it as well. I hear just about enough, and uh, yeah, yeah, I hear just about enough. Only sometimes do I have to take them out to speak to people. The only thing that happens is that if I'm walking, if I'm going over a drain. I always get a bit nervous. I'm just like, <laughs> say if I trip and it just falls down the drain. Stuff of nightmares. Actually, let's put this on another layer. 
Let's go make a new layer and probably put an overlay of it because I want to keep some of the colours underneath rather than painting over it completely. Smooth this out and see what happens. Well, maybe save up for the AirPods if you want them that much. Have you tried them out? Do you know they're definitely what you want? Because they're not cheap, are they? Oh, President S S S then, um he's been muted because he was disrupting. Abdullah, you've asked that question quite, you, you've said that quite a few times. I've looked around and I've seen no evidence of that, so be careful with the information that you spread, unless you come back out. I really think until I saw that I things can't properly look correct. I need to get around to that. Um, I use over. I don't always use overlay for shadows. But for this one, because I weighed, because I've taken so much time to put in like these colours underneath, I really wanted it to show through. So that's why I, I used the overlays there, just to make sure that I was getting those greens and purples and oranges showing through. I'm going to merge this layer in, in, in a few minutes and uh, continue as I was before. So I save that. Make it a little bit darker around here. Okay, it doesn't look like you're as in anything useful to this chat. So unfortunately, I will have to hide you. But it's just for the stream, okay? We'll quite keep it positive here. Oh, Mad Max, trust me when I say that, there's a gazillion ways to do <laughs> to do any, well, you, you probably know this, there's a gazillion ways to, to do anything on on these devices, or even within art in general. So, yeah, using the overlays is, is, is just one of the, well, infinite ways in which to add time like this. Multiply is sometimes a good way to do it. That's why I use my comics, I use multiply, where it just sort of always adds darkness. Uh, favorite anime? It's, I don't really have one, but I mean, Naruto has played a very big role in, you know, my style and how I've navigated throughout art, in, throughout my, well, throughout the last 15 years, isn't it? So, I'll say Naruto's definitely up there. But then there's other ones which have had really 
sort of big impact on my life, such as um, Dragon Ball Z, Gurren Lagann, Pokemon, you know, ones that we sort of grew up with. So it's, it's hard to pinpoint one. All right, I'm going to merge these layers. is definitely up there. I think it was a lot of people's introduction to um, anime. Yeah, Nuro is very good with story, um, although I do think you'll like it. Sometimes the story goes a bit weird and the, and the narrative choices that he chooses, that the writers cho then choose to take it in, are a bit unusual, but you know, it's it's good, it's quality. Naruto and Bleach were my first two proper anime when I actually realised what anime was. Because of course I was watching um, Pokemon Digimon and Jungle Ball Z for years but I didn't realise that they were Japanese. I thought they were American like X-Men and, <laughs> and uh, Iron Man and stuff like that. The the war arc, I I read the manga. I, so it's only recently that I watched the war arc. Literally like last year, I didn't realize how long it was dragged out, how much they added in, <laughs> because it didn't last that long in the manga. It was a good amount of length, and it ended when it should have. A bit of this green, not green enough. Let's try this. Yeah, there we go. I really would have liked to have done this with oil paints. Just as I'm like moving my pen around the uh, surface of the tablet, I'm just like, I can imagine how this would have felt, felt if it was oil paints. How this would have, how these colors would have been applied. Hello, Lil Yusuf. Hey, Cookie. Good to see you again, both of you. Come to see what more we've done. Hopefully it looks a lot better than it did yesterday. Let's remember where we ended off yesterday. You wanna start watching an anime? Um, what sort of stuff are you into? And we'll see if we can get a recommendation. Do I have an iPad? I don't have an iPad. No, I don't. I don't own a single Apple product. <laughs> I know it sounds really weird, but I don't. Favourite character in the real was either Itachi or Kakashi. It wasn't, it was um, Shikamaru. Because the amount of planning and forethought and uh, sort of self-awareness, I just thought that was really cool. Those were really cool qualities in a character. And the fact that he exercised choice. Like, he knew he could have been Hokage if he wanted. If he really, really tried. And to some degree, he sort of is. But... He chose not to. He chose to be the sort of person that he was. Crime mystery. Crime mystery. I haven't watched any, any crime mysteries in a long, long time. In terms of anime. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Lord Yusuf. Not sure if I can help you with that. Uh, secondary and A level. So right from uh, year seven up to year thirteen or fourteen. And although I did try and do a little bit of primary, and I was like, you know what, this ain't for me. This is a, a bit too tough. Death Note, that's a good one, Prezo. Yeah, Lil Yusuf, if you, if you haven't watched Death Note, check that one out.
this definitely looking a bit fatter on the left. So something is out of place. I don't know which one it is. Did I trace this incorrectly? Or is it literally that my face is wider on the right? I mean, on this side. I should trim it down a bit and see what happens. This is a thing as well, we're not symmetrical. So sometimes when we draw that lack of symmetricality becomes a lot more obvious. So sometimes we have to take a little bit of artistic license. One well, of my favorite animes then, make a list. Oh gosh, you're asking too much. <laughs> I should do a video on that. I might do a video on that. Give me some time. Cause I need to organize them. I've watched a whole lot and a lot of them I've forgotten what they are. And I just remember like little segments from them. So I need to go back over and think about them. that. Hunter X Hunter, I've seen some of it, not amazing, but interesting. Attack on Titan, that's serious storytelling right there, like serious storytelling. Seven Day Sins is good, started good, and did not so good. Avatar The Last Airbender and the Legend of Korra are brilliant. After last and then and Legend of Korra are really really good. There's this continuous debate going on about whether they are anime or not, and personally, I will never count them as anime because to me, anime will always be connected with Japan and things that are made in Japan or at least in Asia. Because of course they do outsource a lot to um, China from what I hear these days. Um, I feel like when it comes over to the western side, it's something else entirely. And I think we're going to need to find a, well it's a cartoon, in my opinion, it's just a cartoon. Or it's, a, it's an, animation, an animated show. Um, I hope that as uh, animation and video game and stuff like that is starting to grow in population in popularity as in the creation of it in um, Africa and the Caribbean I'm hoping that they have their own name for that as well rather than it just being a standard cotton but we'll see Death Parade I have heard of that but I can't remember what it's about what is it about AH Tokyo Ghoul is weird I couldn't finish it Favourite person from Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, Bo Lin. Yeah, sure, Jack. <laughs> Sorry if this uh, conversation turned into something that you weren't expecting. <laughs> We started off on art and technology and somehow ended up on anime. But yeah, I'll be around for a bit longer, so feel free to stop by again.
Yeah, Amon was a good bad guy. To, to be honest, Legend of Korra did bad guys well. I really do think that they had a good a good set of bad guys. I think that bad guys were a bit overpowered in comparison to Korra herself, but... <laughs> to be fair... It's a, it's a different time period where it seems that information about perfecting bending seems to have been a bit more available because just look at the amount of people that were using lightning so to me Avatar the, the series with Aang and the series with Korra are completely completely well not completely but very incomparable Mm -mm -mm -mm. How was a water bender? Whoa, AH, hey, hey, that sounds very interesting. Have you seen Colour by any chance? Someone um, recommended me to watch it, uh, I think on this channel actually. Somebody in the comments said check it out and I checked it and it was solid and it, and it sort of has similar a sort of similar premise slightly similar premise um have i been to guernsey before i have not been to guernsey before it's nice there only 12 episodes nice and short that's how i like them good might check it out during the half term i have a little bit more time Not actually watching anything at the moment now that um got a high school ended. Well, Fire Force. I'm keeping up to date with that, but otherwise I'm not watching anything. Which is good because I'm very busy. Fire is more. The quickest you are crossing and Jesse Bill. Nice. So he was way too overpowered, especially his trio, how they were always supposed to know him, but then muscle. He can fly and even and Korra can do that. It's because people um, have different specialisms and people have, and it's like I said, there's different understandings um, within it, which are more available than they were before. So say for example, before everyone was first of all, pretty isolated in their own countries because of the war going on. People were more focused on the war and on staying alive than they were on practicing that bending so the top benders were literally generals and stuff like that people with time on their hands but now it seems during peacetime people have more time to <laughs> get into metal bending get into lightning bending and and stuff like that so i can see why that would be a possibility in terms of the whole world building aspect of it but yeah i do think he was overpowered in comparison to the um, avatar but i do think it does work with the world have I watched two killed Malcolm X? I have not. I've been meaning to get around to a, through a few documentaries, but the list is ever growing. And I don't actually watch that much t <laughs> TV anymore, TV or shows anymore. Alright, thanks, Mad Max. Thanks for popping in. Would you recommend it, Isma? Hi Diamond Dog, thanks. Still a lot of work to do on it though. You know what, let me do this eye, because I think that's what's really flattening the piece. Once we get the eye in properly, I think that will bring it together. Because at the moment it doesn't look like it's a ball. And remember that's what we want to get across with the eye, that it's a sphere. Have I seen the Dark Knight trilogy? I most certainly have. I think they're brilliant. 
um, that all brilliantly written, which is, to be fair, pretty standard with uh, Christopher Nolan stuff. Really good um, scripts and screenplays. But um, yeah, the third one, of course, has some plot holes, but otherwise, yeah, it was good. The three are good. Okay, let's The Dark Knight is your favourite movie of all time. So that's the, that's the one with, what's his name, right? Joker. Solid movie. Very solid movie. Which of you would I say is the best? I would say, yeah, the second one, Dark Knight, probably is, is the best. But in terms of quotables, Rain has a lot of very quotable lines. I really think I do think Bane was well done. And I love movies with powerful quotes. Unless they're doing it for the sake of it. Sometimes you have people that say stuff that either sounds deep but isn't that deep or where it's deep but you're just like, why is this even here? This is, this does not seem relevant to the entire story. Seems out of the blue. Shadow in here. I'll smile when there's more in this world to smile about. Diamond dog. Fortunately, these are dark times. And I like to think of this as contemplative, not necessarily mean, but contemplative. Makes my forehead look massive. Well, or massive, uh, bigger than it is. Bigger than it already is. His, his acting was good. It was good. I wouldn't say it was necessarily next level, but it was good. To me, playing the, the lunatic isn't very hard. Um, or playing someone who doesn't act like a normal person. Playing someone who feels like a real person Or even if they do have aspects of a person who's not functioning normally, they, they do it in a really, in a more subtle way. Because let's face it, in real life, you don't get people who just walk around being actively, openly 
weird and disruptive. Um, it tends to be a lot more subtle, and I think that's a lot more powerful. I'm trying to think of examples of this, but I can't think of any at the moment. But there are a lot of artists, um, a lot of actors who do that really well. Whereas if they're like a serial killer, say like the Joker, it's a lot less obvious and a lot more subtle. PS5 on launch day, Oof. tempting, but I don't think I can justify <laughs> spending that, that amount of money, especially considering that I don't game as much as I used to. Are you gonna buy it on day one? That eye does not look round. That's problematic. It's gonna be problematic. Oh, my back. I am not sitting with good posture. You're not buying it on launch. How long would you wait then, Predator? Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna do the same. Um, I'm not even sure if I'll get it in 2021, to be honest. If I do, it'll probably be winter 2021. So it's sort of like December-ish. Like I said, I don't game much anymore. So even then I might just, depend on how my life's going around that time, I might be like, nah, it's not worth it, I don't need it. You know, the joys of growing up. <laughs> Sometimes you lose the stuff that you used to enjoy. Ooh, you're not gonna have much time to play, fair enough. Yeah. Especially if you want those top grades. This shadowy bit is very hard to get right. Anyway, which games are you guys looking forward to on the new consoles? Because personally, I'm looking forward to uh, the new Spider Man, the Miles Morales one. Um, looking forward to Final Fantasy 16. Looking forward to that driving game, I don't know, I can't remember what it's called. But the one where you can come out and like run across walls and stuff like that. But it's like a sort of arena type one. Um, which other ones? Godfall, looks interesting. Anything else? I'm trying to think. I did do that entire video on it with my brothers. But yeah, those are the ones that's very sending out at the moment to me. Let's 
this up a little bit. Getting there. All right. I'm gonna put in some temporary eyebrows. No, what you put on there above. To be honest, I don't actually know how to meet people. So, yeah, tell him sorry. Oh, sorry, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. I pressed the wrong one. Oh gosh. <laughs> sorry, Presser. Press the wrong button. I just need to delete all your messages. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, I really need a moderator, like that person said earlier. That way I don't have to try and draw and fuss about all this sort of stuff. Let me just try and point these eyebrows. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's just that you guys always catch me by surprise when you show up. Trying to do the hair. Uh, should we do this on another layer? Nah, let's do it on the same layer. Keep it one painting. Interesting, my hair's showing up as blue on the color picker. I'll deal with the texture later for now. Let's just focus on getting. Coloring. Okay. So at the moment, just looking at this, um, I'm quite happy with how this whole area has turned out. Um, lower face doesn't look too bad either, although this bottom lip needs sorting. Uh, right eye's sort of on its way, but it does need more work. And I'm still, it still looks very flat to me. Uh, and I don't know if it's this area that's doing it underneath it. Uh, forehead isn't too bad, although this bit looks a bit weird. But forehead, in generally speaking, isn't too bad. So we're getting there, we're getting there. It's such a shame because, in the back of my head, all I can think is you know, I've got work tomorrow, um, I've got this to handle. This time, look at these emails to answer, and um, this thing to deal with. And this is an issue that I used to have when I was, say, studying. Um, and so that's why there was a time period where I was literally just pumping out complete in illustrations, like one a week, and there were just loads. And that's what makes up the majority of my. Um, of my posters that are available on my website or when I'm at Comic Con, it's because I could create art without ever thinking of the time. And I would be up to 2 3 a.m. in the morning just finishing off pieces because I could, but I can't do that anymore. 
So it's always like, my art to me always feels slightly, now it has this underlying element of feeling slightly rushed, like it's not enough time and I, I hate it. I'm trying to get out of it, but <laughs> it's so tough. Mm. So, so you're using this time to sort of rest and prepare yourself for the storm to come here. Smart move. Um, nothing wrong with balancing yourself. As long as your work's getting done and you're, you know, heading towards your goal, no reason to overwork yourself to death. Everything in moderation. Was being an art teacher the first job I had in mind? Um, no, I always wanted to be a teacher from when I was in primary school. I always wanted to be a teacher, and I knew I was going to be one eventually. Or oh, there was a good chance I was going to be one eventually. Um, but I thought I was going to become one when I was older. But the opportunity came out, so I took it. And also, when I say I was going to become a teacher, it wasn't necessarily an art teacher. Um, I was very interested in doing physics degree, uh, uh, a physics degree, and I was very interested in doing a. Um, History degree too, because I was very big on those two subjects. I'm still very much into history, which is part of why I'm doing this whole Black History Month stream. Very much into history. It's a big thing to me, um, and I like science a lot, especially astronomy and ast and um, astrophysics and stuff like that, and quantum physics. Not as red as I used to be. I used to like really have a good grasp on it, but well. <laughs> I used to have a reasonable grasp on it, a good grasp for, for, for a 17 year old, but not really anymore. Like people say terms and I don't fully get them anymore. Physics is boring. How can physics be boring? Physics is so similar to, to, to art or it crosses over so much with art um, not just because of things like lighting and um, how things interact in the physical world and stuff but also because of um, the fact that there are some parts of it which are just so insanely abstract <laughs> simply put like quantum physics is, is crazy abstract I mean just think of quarks and stuff like that Yeah, sometimes a teacher can make or break a subject if you do, if you're you don't like that way of teaching. But take it. I don't know. Turn it into your own. Look into it yourself. See if you can find an interest in it. And maybe you can actually bring the joy out of it from them. So you can say, "Hey, I heard about this." Well, when they're talking about a subject, so say, "Hey, I heard about this. Is it true?" And see, see what they what what they say on it. And it may push them to. Um, it may push them to, you know, start delving back into the subject themselves if they've fallen out of love with it, which can sometimes happen. So I'm just using a rough brush to try and get some of the texture on my hair. Um, I always feel weird about hair. Like, I'm not sure if I should go ahead and put in individual curls or not. I mean, I might later on. But now, as long as we get the gist of what's going on here. Ooh, a bit smaller. How long should we stay on for? Should we say 20 more minutes? Go longer, but I felt like my posture was really bad at the beginning. Now oh, back hurts a little. By the way, as a warning to you, young artists, it is a pretty standard thing that a lot of professional artists are, especially digital artists and ones that work in gaming and. Uh, 
comments and stuff like that, it is very typical for them to have really mashed arms and backs and shoulders. We are always in bad repair. So one of the things you gotta do is just look after yourself. Um, I did do it, one of my first videos on this channel was with my brother who's a physiotherapist talking about that. And it's a pretty good video, albeit poor quality, but I'm hoping to get him back in again just to give us a bit more advice on that. And more generally speaking, not just in terms of uh, art students and art artists, because I think it's a problem that a lot of students have. Where they'll develop RSI and things like that from studying too hard. This is a very nice brush. Which one is this? DG up to. Okay. I think this would be good for using for brushes. Not brushes, for um environments and landscapes. I think this would work well with rocks. So I must remember that for later. I miss making environment artwork. People love it, it sells really good. Just as, an, uh, just as a side note for you um, aspiring game artists and, and illustrators, from what I hear, environment art, whether 3D or, or 2D, is a lot more in demand than character art. Everybody starts with characters and so there's loads of character artists to go around. So if you go to the environments, companies apparently are more likely to, to hire you. Or there's a higher chance of getting a job. Proficiency in both. Even better. Let's see if we can get a little bit of yellow on this. Whoops, let's take down the opacity. My PC is making a lot of noise. Hope it's not overheating. It is hot. If I cut out, it's because it's overheated. It's happened only once before, and that was in summer, so hopefully it won't happen here. Springish or something. <laughs> this hair looks so soulless. It looks very flat. I think I might have to go in and put in some individual curls. That might. Do look something for it. Did I build my PC or was it pre-built? Um, I'm actually on a uh, laptop and I've never built a PC. I've often wanted to, but no, I've never, never built one. Um, this one, this laptop, I bought straight, um, but my last PC, it's, uh, in fact, it's sort of my current PC, I just don't use it. Um, it's it's been upgraded. It came with a lot of like empty space in it and stuff. L literally for upgrading, it was a gaming PC, and uh, I, we got it when I was a teenager, and it still runs very very well today. I think it's got like twelve to yeah twelve gig of RAM or something, maybe even sixteen. And that's from me just buying some upgrades for it. And it had like sixteen gig back when back when I was in my early 20s, so it was very good for for its time. You ever built yours? Or do you plan to build them yourself?
Oh, of course, no, that's something on there. Okay. Yeah, I can see why you say it's confusing. And I'm always scared that I'll buy an expensive part and just wreck it. <laughs> Can't know things like graphics cards and other parts can be very expensive. What did I just do? Oh gosh. Um, this one, I think. Yes. Just had a small mistake there with the brush, so I. Okay, so let's do that work on the year. I'm not sure if I need to do much subsurface scattering in here, but I guess there should be a little bit of warmth showing through. If you don't know what subsurface scattering is, then give it a quick Google. I was actually going to do a video on it, but it's a lot more complex than I thought. I don't want to do anything too simple on it, so I'd have to read up on it a bit more. But basically, it's when light hits your skin or any surface for that matter, and it bounces around in between before coming out and going to your eye. So, say for example, in your ear, you will see a slightly pinkish, not pinkish, orangish, reddish color, and that is literally the blood inside your ear because your air is so thin, it's the blood bouncing around. I mean, the light bouncing around um, the blood and the skin before coming to your eyes. So you can see this warm color within it. Um, gaming graphics took a massive leap when subsurface scattering started getting put, in, put into engines because back in the days of PS2 and even early days of PS3, it really wasn't there. So when you look at PS3 and then you look at PS4 graphics, you'll notice that the skin doesn't look as hard and solid and it's literally a subsurface carrying. Hmm? <laughs> art and science go hand in hand. Because remember art is all about visuals and the world we live in, so. Because, uh, chemistry and physics tie a lot into what we see and how materials act and that's what we're trying to present as artists that's what we end up with a whole pile of science <laughs> you'll find that lots of um Artists are very good at history as well, because context is everything. And the artists who don't look enough into history end up creating work which gets criticized because people just like, this is historically inaccurate or this is insensitive because you don't understand the link between this and that culture and 
what you've done there. So you often find that they're very good at history. Yeah. There's a sick pitly. So prayer to S Z E S S Z N. Decide what you're going to study yet. Any idea? Whether it's gonna be in the arts or something else. Okay, what's it going to be? and technology and business okay how about beyond that apprenticeship university straight to work absolutely yes I did do GCC art school and A level and then I did art at university fine art at university What do you want to study at uni? So that's DT related. Nice. There's a lot that you can do in that. Will it be engineering? Will it be product design? Something along those lines. Or it could be that you break it right down and you start going into material sciences or even prosthetics, stuff like that. There's massive openings for you in the market. A lot of employability there if you're good. out of it. Definitely right place. Yes. Let's put them there. Okay, did you nothing? Final Fantasy thirteen or Last of Us Two. I haven't finished the Last of Us Two. Well, I haven't finished watching the playthrough of Last of Us Two. But at the moment, I'm leaning towards. Uh, oh no, they're good at it. They're good in different ways. 
they go in different ways. But Last of Us 2 does feel like a lot of pointless meandering and a lot of repetition. Uh, yeah, first one was a very solid game. First one was definitely a solid game. They're both equally linear games, so. Two games focused on storytelling. And by the way, did you just compare a uh, <laughs> compare a PS3 game with a PS4 game? But the end of end of um, end of cycle PS4 game as well. is not making me happy. Let's put on this air a little bit here at the bottom. Oh geez, we're coming up to four o'clock. Okay, um, we'll keep going for now. I'm not stopping a bit. That day's flown by. Is it still rain outside? Well, if you are in the East London area. Uh, do these eyebrows and then I'll have something that looks a little bit more finished yeah they're, they're closing doesn't mean they're closing for good but it's not looking great for them personally um, I think that the cinema industry is going to change when it does return so I think in the coming years it's going to be a lot more about the experience because people are going to get so used to watching stuff at home so they're going to be wanting more at the cinema there'll be a few which stay as they have been but I think a lot will do a lot more 4D stuff or they'll have other stuff going on there like maybe galleries and things like that um, with images from the movie like concept art and process and props and stuff like that I think that there's going to be a lot more sort of experience based stuff because simply put we don't really need cinema that much anymore and I was even watching something the other day because the quality of our home TV so I was watching something the other day I was watching Weathering With You um, and it looked better on my TV than it did in the cinema and that's and so it's just like why I'm bothering cinema anymore. When I went to watch Tenet, the noise was so loud and it felt so uncomfortable being in there because of how unbearable the noise was. And I, I literally felt like my ears were being assaulted <laughs> that I was like, geez, this would have been better to watch at home. So, you know, cinemas need to get their act together and start innovating. Otherwise, they're not gonna, the current companies that exist are not gonna stand when when things start to return to relative normalcy. Yeah, the Batman movie is looking very interesting. Robert Pattinson is a very skilled actor. Um, Godzilla vs King Kong. I haven't heard nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> Tenet was brilliant. Tenet was brilliant. It's been a long time since I've had since the movies made me. I don't know, feel like that coming out, like real smile on my face. Ooh. Yeah, leave it like that. That's fine. Let's 
sound like wiggling us here. Uh, a little bit of this red strain through, a little bit of blood here. A little bit of warmth, show the blood underneath my skin. Diamond Dog, I watched it in View Extreme at uh, Westfall View, which is <laughs> a pretty good cinema. Akira, last time I, I tried watching Akira, I fell asleep. I'm not paying to watch that. <laughs> I'll see if there's any any thing like Netflix or anything like that, that or Prime or something like that that might have it. If they don't have it, then I guess I'm gonna wait until it does become available on those platforms because I am not paying to watch Kira. We can accept the influence that it, that stuff has on has had on culture without <laughs> actually liking it. Yeah, Christopher Nolan is a solid director. Look at this air. Going to get darker, is that what it is? Let's get a little bit of screen in here. I've seen Ghost in the Shell, I have, and um, uh, which one uh, are you talking about specifically though, are you talking about the live action or the original party one, or even the redo of the party one, animated, animated one that is. First one, the anime one. Yeah. It's been a, a while since I've watched it, so I don't think I currently have any com comments on it. All right, cool. All right, let me just solidify these eyebrows a bit as we start to close up. Let's make you lower. Uh, it was a uh, browns. My eyebrows are a mess. Both in this image and in real life. Let's see if I can put in my beard as well. How do I feel about Final Fantasy 16 being rated 18? Um, depends what's making it 18. Uh, I've never been a big fan of Blood and Gore. I don't think it adds anything to a story at all. 
um, which of course we saw in the trailer, so I don't really care much for that. Uh, I can't think of anything else that would make it 18, to be honest, I don't tend to, well, they tend to have limits that they don't cross, so I don't know what to expect from them. All I'm going to say is that game currently does not look very diverse or like it was made in this age which I find very surprising as I said in my video already and I find it strange and I'm not impressed on Square's part I find it weird by AAA Studio to not have any diversity in a game I think it's, I think it's a joke Inception Inception was good I've only seen it once though I'd like to watch it again Yeah, Inception is way more easier to understand than Tenet. Interstellar was slow. If you want to talk about that. And the... Uh, the sound was really blaring. Not... Sim not that similarly to um, Tenet, the blaring noise in that was the issue that I had with it, and Inception seems to have, I mean, and Instella had a similar problem. <laughs> the ending was a madness just YouTube it um, I can't fully remember because it was a while back but I think it was something like um, the future humans basically um, created a way for the humans of the past to survive so it's a, it ended up being a weird time loop that's what that weird bit was with the um, with the bookcase and going into the black hole and all that stuff. So here's the thing, everyone thinks that um, Tenet is linked really closely with Inception, but to me, <laughs> it's got more links to Interstellar than anything. The love conquer conquers all thing is is interesting, but it's more it's less love conquers all and more uh, love transcends time. And it's less of a you know in anime you have that sort of power friendship type thing. It's not in that sense. It's a little bit more 
it's a little bit more philosophical and less Deus Ex Machina. And I get it. It sounds a bit ridiculous, but I get it. Because after all, how can you still love someone who doesn't exist? And yet we do. begins I saw some of that analyzed the other day and I want to go back and watch it because I was in my early teens when I first watched it let's go a little bit higher now if this is looking weird um, it's because the high contrast so you'll see what I do in a minute to get rid of this because the lower portion of my face this whole section is um, darker so that's why the beard looks so out of place it's crazy it's, it's so dark compared to my skin that it shouldn't be so hopefully the red lip doesn't help either which will need a bit of dialing back, so we'll see what we can do. Yeah, we're going with a multiply layer. Nope, let's go for a soft brush. And we'll just turn it down a bit. And just build up here. That red is getting on my nerves. The lip red. It's actually making a mess of things. Let me just cycle through these a bit. So, so multiply. Too warm, too warm. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no. Alright, we'll go back to multiply. The overlay first. How's overlay look? Nah, too orange. Let's stick with multiply. Let's see what we can do with this. Go a bit darker too. It is very philosophical. Batman Begins is a much more complex than I thought it was at first. best than working so I'm just gonna go specifically underneath these areas and see if I can make it a little bit darker and it's not working here so I'm just going to do it on another layer before sort of this color make it a little bit less You know what? Let me see if I can make this a little bit. Paler. Like I said, pink. Why the hate from Maggie Gyllenhaal? <laughs> I 
I think I know what the issue is. Let's get, get a rougher brush. See if that. Still with the slip because it's getting on my nose now. It's just too red. Let's desaturate the thing. Uh, let's subtract. It's still too saturated. Let's try it. Let's give it, I'll give up on shortcutting it. Let's just do it by hand. Cheese brush. Low opacity slightly. Thanks, Simon Dog. Is that one from the Dark Knight Rises? Um, Protest so then the prison scene that you're talking about, or is it, um, or is it from Batman Begins as well? Oh, I'm doing something there. Oh gosh, no, never mind. Actually, yes, let's mind. Let's get ready. Crystal. Hey, you say Bane got taken out by a fool, but like a fool, but don't forget that in Comic Sans, the current series, he's constantly getting taken out by someone just pulling out his pipes on the back of his neck. So <laughs> he always gets taken out in pretty ridiculous ways because he is, when it comes down to it, stronger and better in a lot of ways than Batman. It's literally just. His pipes are exposed. Okay. Let's go a bit darker here. I'll put back in the highlights after. Bounce like there, that should stay. It's good. What did you guys say to the inclusion of Damien in uh, in a movie? 
but I'm actually a big fan of Damien since the recent um, animated films. This is really not looking like me. Oh my gosh. Let's take away the bear, see what happens. Yeah, well, too bad. We'll keep working it. But for now. Is my chin too long? Is that what part of the issue is? It is too long. Still too long. Go back and try that again. A bit more. And we will widen it. There we go. It's starting to get there. Slowly. Before we finish up, because I'm about to finish up, guys. <laughs> the left eye a little bit out of place. Yeah, I think I've thickened um, this area too much. But we'll see. And also the the because of the difference in lighting. You know what? You mentioned it now. I have to sort it. <laughs> All right. Let's just bring, let's just bring this uh, section here in a, a little bit. Looks like it was in the right place. Let me just bring it up there. And what's going on here? Something's happened here, something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong. This is the forehead. I feel like the light is stretching too far here. Mm -hmm. This isn't finished. It's just that I'm, I'm finishing up for the day. The shirt will get some time in the next uh, session. So it doesn't look as 
choppy. All right, it's actually starting to look a little bit more like me now. It's good. Just a little bit more. <laughs> it's still a ways off. It's still a ways off. I'm just going to rub out some of the spares as well. I'm going to use a rough brush just to. Who is this? That there. Lower that opacity up a little bit. And that there. Up there. Yeah, <laughs> Naruto is better than Bruto. Oh, yeah, Predator Esther then. Off you go. Uh, thanks for passing by. See you on a future stream. Uh, see, I don't even have a bed 90% of the time. So I don't know why I chose to have one in this image. Should have shaved it and taken a picture. Out here causing troubles for myself. I know no reason. It sounds a bit like me, guys. Are we starting to get into that realm yet? a bit oh are my eyes really that out of line with each other let's have a look apparently so yeah my eyes are that uneven I'm actually really intrigued by how out of place my eyes are how non symmetrical they are let's have a look Okay, so there's one eyelid. It's not by much, but it's enough to make it look weird if you look closely. Why don't I do my front covers like this? Because that's comic art. In comic art, I'm going for a really stylized look. Or a very comic stylized look. And yeah, like you said, Comic art is designed partially for time. So, yeah. And to be fair. Nope, that wasn't a cover. I didn't use that as a cover. I was thinking of the image that I did off Ryan that time. All right. Um... All right. I am going to do a little bit of the shirt because I do want to post up this image because I haven't posted in about three, two months on Instagram. So I'm going to cut out this section and post that. So let's have a look at the shirt. You know what? Let's not do it on a different layer. Let's do it on the same layer. Let's keep going. I'm actually getting really into this. I haven't felt this feeling in a long time, guys. In a long, long, long time. That's 
this is the black that we want. Not a brown black, but a blue greeny one. I think in the actual image it's a uh, sort of purpley reddish one, but yeah, keep it blue. I think it'll go well with the background and the contrast of my skin. How many people have we got with us right now? I haven't checked the numbers in a while. Oh, we're here with a couple of people. Nice. Welcome everyone. Just a quick reminder of why we're here. Um, I felt like, well, I haven't done a lot of drawing recently. And because Black History Month, I thought, what a good time to get back into it. And start with a drawing of myself. After all, Black History Month is a time of self-reflection for a lot of us. Oh, I watched the boys on Amazon. I've seen some of it. Quite a lot of skipping there. A lot of weird stuff in that. But we won't go into that. At the end of um, finishing all of this, I'm going to when I finally finish this piece, I'm going to um, create a. Sped up version of it, maybe 10 minutes or so. But you guys can see it from beginning to end if you don't have time to watch the entire process. Hopefully, this is uh, proven educational to some of you. If you were interested in art and drawing yourselves, and hopefully, it's mildly entertaining to watch for those of you who are just here for the entertainment <laughs> and the conversation. Let's go a bit lighter here, too light. Wait a second, okay we need the light to be yellowish. Okay, we'll go with this yellow. Oh gosh, tiny bit jarring, but I don't think that's avoidable. <laughs> Cathartic. It's funny because I've never found the process of drawing that cathartic. Life drawing was cathartic. That was um, enjoyable, very calming, um, the process of that. But for these, I really do feel like I'm really attacking the work and a lot of calculations taking place in my mind and it really feels like a sort of war with the canvas to some degree. I do not feel like me and the canvas should get on. I feel like we should be worried. Maybe that's a problem. <laughs> maybe that's why I'm improving slower these days. Maybe, maybe it shouldn't be a fight, but I quite enjoy the fight. 
which hand starting to hurt a bit. There's an interesting quote that a uh, friend of mine, Nigel Ip, our historian, he um, and I use it in my lessons because I think it's a very good quote. Where he basically said that uh, drawing, especially from observation, is uh, the battle between they see the mind and the hand and what the person perceives to basically see how well they can represent so the hand is capable of learning so much or the person's ability is capable of learning so much but the brain knows what it sees and it wants to do it but it doesn't always succeed no in fact it doesn't succeed and what we do end up with from that is style whether that style's good or bad or not so it comes out of that fight the most we can do is just refine that and improve it over the years I think fighting is a reasonable is a reasonable term to use for a lot of what we do in art. Really carving into the paper. I don't know if that means that art is a uh, <laughs> is a violent process. Makes me think of um, the artist, Japanese one, who has a piece where as he draws or paints each line, this thing is so squeaky, as he um, draws or paints each line, it, um, he screams. But to just exemplify the pain in the process. Quite interestingly, um, while we are on this topic, crossing back to my original topic about Black History Month, um, I have found that to be a thing with a lot of black artists, especially fine artists, when looking at their work. It doesn't matter what they're doing, but I do feel like there is an element of pain behind it. And I, <laughs> every time I go to the gallery and I see a, um, a black artist's work, I, I, before I see it, I, I hope that it's missing that element. But it's it's very rarely missing, even if the topic is not on ones of uh, human rights and history and that sort of thing. Still, there's an element of pain in their work, unmistakably. I'm not sure if others see it, and to be honest, I haven't really discussed it much with people. But I personally see it. Maybe it's a slight bit of projection, but I don't think it is. All these topics that I've talked about in the last sort of five minutes um, will probably end up as videos with better explanations someday. At the moment, it's just me sort of rambling. Okay, very rough shirt at the moment. We can always spend more time in it later. Yeah, there's a lot of artists that don't get the recognition they deserve. Although, um, I do feel like, well, we're of course used to, I, 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 because of the degree that I, that I did, I've had enough brushings with the actual art world and how they function. That's the gallery art world. And simply put, yeah, yeah. Um, it, ha it, it does have a history of being very 
gatekeeperish with people not being let in because of where they're from, what they do, what they studied or if they studied, uh, what gender they are and what colour their skin is and yeah, the art world is no different to the rest of the world within that. Yeah, diamond dog. That's because art has nothing to do with what limbs you have or anything like that. Um, in terms of figurative art, and which is what I'm doing right now, um, if you're trying, if you're talking replication and making something look like something, it has nothing to do with that. It's just, it's pure knowledge. It's what you know, and then as soon as your your body is used to those uh, or has built up that muscle memory to put down to paper that which you know then it's cake which is why if I lose my right arm um, once my left arm grows as strong as my right arm it will be able to do exactly the same stuff thing because it's all about the knowledge in the head our arms are just tools when it comes to art we talk about artists even a blind artist can still create amazing art just like Beethoven he understood the science behind uh, his music and the sort of science the stuff with the with the way that cores work together and stuff like that so even as his he hearing deteriorated and he started relying on things like vibrations or those massive air horns which he shoved in his ear even then he was still able to make good music because the science doesn't change it doesn't lie <laughs> in a lot of cases Okay, my hand is actually starting to ache now. I'm leaning on this tablet for so long. So I'm just going to try and get this area of collar into a reasonable state of repair. And then we'll call it. Thank you to everyone who was able to come along today. I see you made this uh, really good afternoon, despite it being a dreary day. Um, I'm not sure when I'll continue it, if I can. Do it tomorrow if I do have time I will do a bit more work on this tomorrow if worse comes to worse then next week Saturday or Sunday hopefully I'll be able to do a bit on it and if worse really comes to worse then I'm gonna wake up early in the morning <laughs> and do it while you're all, all asleep maybe I'll still live stream it but yeah that's what that's one option just watch out for the notification if you haven't subscribed subscribe already you'll get the notifications if you have those turned on I think that's how a lot of you are getting here anyway, if you're seeing those notifications on your devices. Uh, I've been streaming, what, for t is it two hours now that I've been going for? Two hours and 19 minutes. Do I like opera? i got to be honest, I don't really like opera that much it impresses me the range of the human voice but generally speaking I, I don't really like it that much I like choirs though I think choirs can do some powerful stuff Choirs and opera aren't so bad. Does it count as opera still? When it's a, when it's a whole like chorus doing it.
Okay, this comes down a little bit. Just for the gram. Hey, that's not what I want. Control D. Let's see my one. And I will select that. Mesh crop. Okay, save as self portrait more uh, whip. Save as JPEG. Save, save, save. Cool. We'll step back, step back, and save this as a normal self portrait file. Yes, I do. There we go. And you are saved. Thank you everyone for coming to the stream. It's been a good two hours. Feel free to, like I said, subscribe, like, watch any of my other videos. There's loads of interesting stuff up at the moment. I'm quite proud of my repertoire. I think I've got about 110 videos now, which is really cool. Um, and look out for more because there will be more coming and i'm hoping to do some videos soon because i know it's been a while since i've done a, just a straight up normal video but i'm just waiting for things to happen <laughs> the world seems a little bit quiet at the moment um when it comes to the things that my channel's about so yeah we'll just see what we'll see what happens so that's all for today until next time <laughs>